Hey there, fellow maker. Welcome to the shop. You got Bill today. We're getting ready to print some of Bender's parts for his head, but we've got a bit of an issue. You see, it's winter time and it is uncommonly cold here in Seattle, regularly getting below freezing, and we work out of our basement. It's like 55 degrees in there, and that's just way too cold for a 3D printer to uh, function properly. And the setup that I have right now really doesn't insulate the printers. Now our older printer, we had an Ultimaker and uh, I built an enclosure for that thing and it's worked great. So if you want to build an enclosure for yours, you can make one out of insulation foam like we did for that thing. For our Prusa machines, on the other hand, we're a little spoiled. Our buddy Pooch uh, hooked us up with an enclosure specifically for the Mark IV. So I'm going to put that thing together now and then we're going to have to figure out how we can get this whole thing to fit with our whole 3D printer setup over there. So get this thing knocked out and then we'll go do some shop infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That's metal, sick. Oh, one piece. Other side, one piece, one piece. One. Kind of one piece. Yeah. There we go, just a couple hours later and 37 short steps. And uh, our enclosure is all done. Thanks again to Pooch and the folks over at Prusa for hooking us up with this absolute tank of an enclosure. Looks really beefy. Um, next, we've gotta go do a bunch of rearranging so that we even have a shelf to fit this on and so that we have a 3D printing area that just sings. So let's head over to the other part of the shop and get to work. Here is our 3D printing area, and we're gonna change everything behind me. For starters, our Ultimaker, which has been a champ for almost 10 years, is gonna get out of here. This is the enclosure that I built before out of insulation foam, and it's worked really well if you want a more DIY solution. Other printers need to come out, and all these shelves are gonna get torn out so that we can replace it with something bigger for our new enclosure.
Now there's so much room for activities. I also found, this is very exciting, uh, I could plug my phone in here. Uh, not power, kids. No, 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 no. This is a phone line, a landline, and I could take my land phone, which you don't have, and plug into that, and then I could talk to people. <laughs> I also found this. this. This house we live in is over 100 years old, and at some point someone left this. This has to be some kind of uh, homemade wrench. Like, look at, the, it's meant for different sized things, but it was welded to this uh, hollow, yeah, hollow square bar. Uh, this has been here long, we've only, we lived here for like 12 years. This has been here for longer than that, and I think it's been here for longer than hundred years. How cool is that? It's like a king's scepter. That's awesome. And now it's mine. I did some measurements on the enclosure to make sure that the shelf we use will be big enough and we are in luck. Uh, a lot of other people who run 3D printing farms will buy these large metal shelving racks from like Costco or some big box store and we already happen to have a couple of those. We use them to hold all of our book inventory and we're able to clear one off and it should be perfect. It should fit right here perfectly and it's deep enough to hold our enclosure. Let's go move it over. Okay. Oh. This, the, these are not in there permanently. Okay. Oh. Pivot. 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 <laughs> this is actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. <sighs> There we go, that could not have been easier. Didn't even have to take it apart. Uh, it is plenty deep, that's what we really needed, but I also need height. Actually, I need about two feet of clearance for the enclosure. That's down here, and thankfully these shelves are adjustable. One little bonk, two little bonks, and then we can set this down to where it needs to go. which is just right here, right there, and on the other side. And now I'll go back to this side. <laughs> it's like a Stooges routine. Let's give that a bonk in there. Now I'll just do that to the remaining three sides. Shelf goes back in. There we go. Brush the dust off. And now we have loads of room for that big old enclosure. We may be able to fit the Mark 3.5 right next to it. Let's go get it. Is it just like this? Right oh, what a perfect fit. I guess we can go on the right, yeah. Look at that. Oh, that looks awesome. Shelf's a little wiggly. I think I need to brace the bottom of it. Yeah, the floor is not. The floor's not even. super even, and there's tons of room for the Mark III. Let me oh, grab that. Can open all the way. Yeah! And we could even fit more printers down here if we want to. This is already off to a great start. I've got to run power for everything. I have this really cool uh, power strip. It's usually used for audio things. I love that it has switches that light up on the front and the things you power plug in at the back. Before I had it, mounted just like that and I got to come up with something similar. I would love to have this like right there be able to turn on lights and printers right from that spot but I think I'm going to need to custom make a mount or something. I'm going to get all that set up and then we'll jump in and see how it turned out and ha, it's all put together. I am super pleased with how all of this turned out. The machine is printing which means the changes we made didn't break it so that's great. Uh, and it is getting warmer inside of there. It is currently 16.7 Celsius outside and 21.2 in there and climbing, which is great news. That's why we did all of this. I'm also really happy because I think I can fit another one of these enclosures right next to it, right here for our Mark III. So we may have to upgrade that at some point. I was able to get my power strip installed down here. I can turn my printers on and off here and I can turn the lights on and off right here, which is super, super slick. I was able to fit my drawers next to it with a bunch of cables and stuff. Uh, we got Bob over there with his very dapper wig. What a charming fellow he is. And over here on the shelf, we have tons of room for the tools and other storage 
and a little trash can for all the little filament poops that get popped off the bed there. This workstation is now fully operational and I can't wait to print a whole bunch more stuff, especially Bender's head right in there. And that'll be coming up. Uh, I'm printing something right now that I wanna share with you because it's a neat tool. Let's wait until it finishes. Our print is done. It got up to 23.7 Celsius in there, which is nice and toasty. Let's take a look at our print. What a fancy looking thing. This is a radius gauge and I wanna show you how to use it. This radius gauge is used for measuring the outside radius of an existing object. You can also have one to measure the internal radius. If I'm measuring something to uh, 3D print a part for, let's say in CAD, I can use my calipers to measure the real world dimension and use that in my 3D design. But if the object is say rounded, like this edge right here, uh, my calipers don't really help me measure that. There's no reference for it. And that's where the radius gauge comes in. Each one of these is the radius that the number corresponds with. I can set it on there and keep checking until the radius matches. That is pretty close. That looks almost right on and that would be uh, 12 millimeters. And that's pretty cool. So now I can use that measurement in CAD to draw a piece that when I print it should fit right on that radius. That is a radius gauge. And that is our little project for today. That was super fun. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us for this shop infrastructure. I hope you're excited to see some prints coming off of that machine because I know I am. It's got some big things coming up soon. Thanks as always to the members of our Extra Credit Club for your support. We've had a bunch of people join recently. We really appreciate that. Uh, we're gonna be adding more bonuses to the Extra Credit Club. Uh, recently, I added all of our premium 3D print files. So if you are a member, you get those for free and you can go download and print them right now. If you're looking for a deal on those print files, it's a great way to do it. Uh, we have links to Patreon or right here on YouTube memberships if you wanna join and we could really use your support. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next build.